he's special. He's just special. He's just special. This is what I'm talking about. You know, people always looked at me like, I'm a, like six foot one white boy. Like, I mean, there is a thing. You know, it took me a while. I, I did four years of college. It wasn't like a one and done. I always had that dream, and I was never going to let anybody tell me that. Like, I couldn't. Missed free throw. Four for the rebound. Here's Pritchard. He loves these. Puts it up half court of the buzzer. It just seemed like yesterday to when the six foot one highly skilled point guard solidified himself as one of the most dynamic floor generals in all of high school basketball. Now this is a player who's had it made up in his mind ever since a kid that he was going to be an NBA pro one day, despite being undersized his entire life, but was also always the type of player who was willing to go to the extreme when it came to truly enhancing his basketball skills. And even when things didn't quite go his way, his journey he's always had the utmost confidence in who he was as a player this is the Peyton Pritchard story Peyton Pritchard was born on January 28, 1998 into Wallaton, Oregon to mother Melissa and father Terry Pritchard. And it's safe to say that Peyton would come up in a household full of athletes as his father played collegiate football at the University of Oklahoma while his mother was a gymnast. His aunt played college basketball at the University of Arizona but also had his sister Lexi who played college basketball at Santa Clara as well as Sanford University while operating at the point guard position. But also his older brother Anthony played high school as well as at the collegiate level alongside Peyton and is currently a professional basketball player. Now the love and drive that he had for basketball all came from no other than Dwayne Wade as he was the reason why Peyton wore number three coming up. I think it's what made me like start to love it is when, like his first championship run. Mm -hmm. Like I was young, I think I was like seven maybe at the time. He's the, really the one that like made me love basketball like his, like he was offensively killing defensively like taking people's hearts that year yeah. and I was like just fell in love with it his tenacity and obviously like I mean it was tremendous but coming up Peyton had a love and drive for the game of basketball that most kids just didn't have see Peyton would set his alarm clock to 5 30 a.m on a daily basis he would immediately head to the garage and dribble a Wade basketball roughly an hour each morning before school and as he dribbled the ball extremely hard trying to perfect his ball control there would be times to when his hands would start to bleed and by seventh grade he had already made up in his mind that he wanted to be an NBA pro one day but was also willing to put in all the work that it would take to get there. His parents would even constantly remind him that he could not settle for being like everyone else. As they stated, quote unquote, if you want to be great, you can't be normal. And because of that, he missed a number of childhood experiences. But all the sacrifices would all pay off as he got older. Before he knew it, he was already contributing on varsity as a freshman. Because while standing at 5'9", at just the age of 14 years old, he would help lead Westland to their first championship in 16 years and finish his high school career winning four consecutive state championships. Now he wasn't putting any spectacular numbers up during his freshman year, but he was truly a team player. His head coach even stated, Pritchard sacrificed a lot of his game to help a lot of the other players around him who happened to be older and more talented at the time. But as a sophomore, he really came into his own as he averaged 18 points and 8 assists. But as his crew played in the Leshwad Invitational against Whitney Young, which featured the number one player in the country in Jaleel Okafer, Peyton hit the game winner, which really allowed him to gain a lot more recognition. Following the season, he would be invited to try out for the United States Under-17 basketball team in Colorado Springs. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to make the cut, while other players like Jason Tatum, Harry Giles, and Terrence Ferguson all made the team. But honestly, Pritchard just never allowed it to derail his confidence. Instead, it created the chip on his shoulder going forward, as he just knew that he was going to have to take his work ethic to the next level. And as a junior, he would put up 22 points and 6 assists per contest. But in the Les Squad Invitational, he was a big part in his team upsetting the number 2 ranked team in the country in Wheeler High School, which featured no other than Jalen Brown. And after finishing his junior season repeating as Todd Pratt Player of the Year, he was now regarded as a four-star recruit according to ESPN. The six-foot-one guard would finish off his senior campaign being able to maintain averages of 24 points, seven assists, and three steals per contest. Now, his 
outstanding play would allow him to wrap up his senior season, earning 6A State Player of the Year, as well as Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year. And at this point in time, he had big time offers all across the country from schools like Baylor, Oregon, Kansas, UCLA, and Michigan State. But he made the ultimate decision to sign a letter of intent to play college basketball at the University of Oregon. Now, his freshman year at Oregon wasn't anything that really stood out as he just played his role as a floor general and was a key distributor on his crew as they went 31-4 and that season. And Pritchard was even able to crack the starting lineup just after the fifth game of the season. But by the next season, his improved efforts allowed him to be named to the All-Pac-12 second team while leading his team in scoring and assists per game with 15 points and 5 assists. And that all allowed him to be selected to play in the 2017 USA Men under 19 World Cup in Cairo, Egypt. From there, he would help his team to a bronze medal, but even got himself named to the World Cup All-Star team and averaged nine points and three assists per game. But as a junior, he would be named Pac-12 Tournament Most Outstanding Player while leading the nation in total minutes played with 1,349 in 38 games. And at this point in time, it was like he was having breakout game after breakout game. His leadership alone made him one of the most intriguing guards in the entire country. And following Following the season, he opted to stay for a senior year, and he did not disappoint. He would end his senior campaign being able to take home the Bob Cousy Point Guard of the Year Award, the Lou Olsen Award, Player of the Year, Pac-12 Player of the Year, while being named to the All-Pac-12 First Team, a Naismith Trophy finalist, First Team All-America, and was named as a finalist for the Wooden Award National Ballot. He scored with double digits in 37 out of his last 38 games with the team. And after amazing four years, he decided to enter the 2020 NBA draft. And despite being undersized, as well as being a bit older than a lot of the prospects entering the draft, he was still projected a potential first round pick. And so after being selected 26 overall by the Boston Celtics in his rookie season, his tough and gritty type style of play were things that allowed him to be impactful each and every time he stepped foot on the court. And as Kemba Walker was in and out of the lineup with injuries, he was given a bigger opportunity in which he took full advantage of it. On January 4th, 2021, Richard scored a career high 23 points in a victory over the Toronto Raptors with 8 assists and 2 rebounds. In the very next game, he made a game-winning layup and a narrow victory over the Miami Heat. And just a couple weeks later, he earned his first NBA start, but had an underwhelming performance, only scoring two points in 28 minutes in a loss versus the Detroit Pistons. And that performance came in the beginning stages of his rookie wall, where he struggled to be efficient and impactful. My first two years, though, I used to sit at home and like after bad games and like be miserable. Like you almost got to tell yourself, I'm him. I'm still him. Boom. And truthfully, it wouldn't be until April to when he overcame his struggles, as he scored in double figures in six of seven games in a row, including a career best 28 points versus the OKC Thunder. Now, by just his second season, he was able to contribute and experience making it as far as the NBA Finals, where they would lose to the Golden State Warriors in six games despite a 2-1 lead. On April 9, 2023, Pritchard simply went off going for 30 points, a career high in 14 rebounds, and a career high in 11 assists. In a win versus the Hawks, and following the Celtics' exit in the 2023 playoffs in the Eastern Conference Finals, due to limited minutes, Payton decided to request a trade. But on October 8, 2023, the Celtics and Pritchard agreed to a fully guaranteed four-year $30 million contract extension. And after seeing increased playing time, averaging 22 minutes per game, he was the only player on the Celtics roster to play in all 82 Two regular season games. He would average a career best in 10 points, 3 assists, and 3 rebounds per contest. On April 12, 2024, Pritchard scored a career high 32 points while also recording 11 assists, 3 rebounds, and 1 steal in a victory over the Charlotte Hornets, becoming the first Celtics player in play-by-play -play era to record 23 points and 9 assists in the first half. Now just 2 days later, in the final game of the regular season, he set another career high, putting up 38 points while also recording recording 12 assists and 9 rebounds in a victory, becoming the second Celtics player to put up at least 20 points and 6 assists in the first half in two consecutive games. And that all allowed him to join John Havlicek, Larry Bird, and Bob Cousy as the only players in franchise history to record back-to-back 30-point, 10-assist double-doubles.
In game two of the NBA Finals, Pritchard made a 30-foot three-pointer at the buzzer to end the third quarter. Eight days later, in game five, he made a half-court shot at the buzzer to end the first half of the closeout victory, which gave Pritchard his first NBA championship. Throughout all the good and bad stretches in the midst of Peyton Pritchard's journey, he's always maintained a relentless type mindset and superior type work ethic that's took his game to new heights. And because of that, he's now a first time NBA champion. You know, like a lot of us have to start from like the ground up, you know, we're not gonna be like high draft picks or anything like that. So you gotta get it through your work, showing up every day, uh, grinding. And that's kind of how I've gone to this point now. So I just try to feed that to all the young ones that are coming in. like. You know, do the little things, show up every day, keep getting better and better. Like, you don't know how far you could take it. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Peyton Pritchard story.